Hello, everyone. It's Becky Below here. I am a Creative Memories Advisor from Newport News, Virginia, and I have a couple of tips for you today. Um, very simple tips. Um, so hopefully I won't take up too much of your time. <laughs> you know how I get though. Um, anyways, I'm very glad to be here. Um, let us, let's just go ahead and share the screen. Um, if, um, if you have not been on the website lately, lots of new stuff, um, you should go check it out. Today, we're going to look at the new Birds and Blossoms line. I haven't done the first thing with it, um, but I do want to show you how absolutely pretty it is. And I'm also going to show you a little trimmer hat that I don't think I've showed on YouTube before. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's talk about the trimmer first. So this is the personal trimmer, not to be confused with our awesome uh, 13 inch, 12 and a half inch, 12 inch straight trimmer. Um, this one is absolutely the best. And because it's absolutely the best, it is, I know uh, my customers, I know that I am guilty of it. Um, you know, if you're just going to trim a photo or two, you're going to throw a photo under here. Mm -hmm. It's really good to have both trimmers. And let me tell you why. Uh, this is an actual blade. So this is a blade that actually um, cuts um, um, because the blade is sharp. And because the blade is sharp, and it digs into this mat, which is what gives us that amazing uh, cut like butter feel. Actually, the blade is going to wear thin. All right. And then you'll have to replace the blade. Too big of a deal. Um, they're, you know, like $9 to replace. And I get, you know, probably a couple thousand cuts out of that before that happens. However, if you are frugal and would like to save your blades a little bit longer, you're going to cut your photographs with this, your personal trimmer. And the reason for that is, is this is not a blade, all right? This is not gonna dull. People that they have the original one from 30 years ago, um, and it is still cutting. Um, so most people replace this guy, not because anything's wrong with it, but because, um, because they want the newer, more prettier version, okay? Um, so they're, they're, they're great tools. They are friction cuts. Um, some people tell me, oh, my trimmer is not sharp anymore. What do I do to sharpen it up? Well, you can use wax paper. And the reason I say wax paper is we're not trying to sharpen the blade. You know, you'd use tin foil if you're trying to sharpen the blade, but it's not a blade to begin with. <laughs> All right. This is one that you can peel good about you know um smaller hands working with because you know you know they would have to really push down hard uh to, to do some damage because it's it's a friction cut wax paper will build up a build up in here on the on this uh cutting surface and um will make it appear sharper okay but what i just do is i tell people knowing that the the friction has decreased that when you go down just pull it in a little bit so if you pull it in a little bit, it's going to, it's going to re uh, you know, decrease whatever has happened over time to decrease that friction in between. So just pull, tug it in if you're having trouble with it. It's a great, great tool. All right. Uh, so um, cut photos with this because um, they do have an emulsion on them, especially your glossies have an emulsion on them that is hard on this blade. So it's harder on the blade than paper. Okay. All right. So um, this is not glossy, glossy. This is a creative memory print. I love our prints because they don't show fingerprints. <laughs> All right, so I do want to give that shameless plug in. But my biggest complaint about this trimmer is that it doesn't cut more than five inches. But that is not exactly true either. Um, I do mark my five inch right here, kind of on the edge. If you pull up your drawer, by the way, which is really great for storing some of the things that you might have trouble. You know, everybody has a different way of storage, but, you know, people can store you know, like all kinds of things, you know, in your trimmer. You're going to want to close this up if you want to put your blades in there, which is not a bad idea anyways, because those are also sharp. All right, so I wanted to show you that the drawer is great for storing things. It's great for throwing photos in um, that you want cropped, because you can even crop using your cutting system. 
um, on the surface of this. Um, so like if you're going to go on a little trip, like just a small two hour road trip, you could take a stack of pictures and put them inside with your blades and a couple of your patterns, the ones that will fit nicely on top of this surface, which is your smaller circle and your two smallest ovals cut beautifully on here. OK, and which are the ones I use most often. And um, you actually could, could get your cropping done on the way to somewhere, okay? So it's a great, uh, sitting at a doctor's appointment, sitting in, in the preschool line, you could crop a whole stack of photos, which is going to speed up your process at, um, um, when you actually do crop. All right, but if you have an 8 by 10 photo, if you flip this little drawer over, I'm going to show you what I do. I may have already showed you this, and if I have, I apologize, but um, my customers claim I haven't showed them, so I'm going to show, show it again. All right, so there's this little smidgen right there, and when you flip it upside, if you'll put that little smidgen inside, all right, then the very first line is your six-inch mark, and then if you go one line and a half, that's your seven-inch mark, and if you go a half and a full, that's your eight-inch mark, and if you go a whole and a half, that is going to be your nine inch mark. Okay. So it goes all the way out to like nine and a half inches over here. Okay. So, um, so if indeed you had a bigger photo, which this is not, but if you did, well, let's just say I wanted to cut this one and I wanted to cut it at five and a half. All right. I literally could just take it to that very first line uh, at that six there, and then you could cut it off. I'm going to make sure that I don't yeah. indeed have that over there. Um, so five and a half would be in between the five and the six. All right, and there you got it. All right, so I wanted to show you uh, that to make sure that you were aware that your trimmer had that feature. Even our older ones um, have grids underneath. Uh, the darker colored ones, of course, are harder to see the lines, um, you know, if you're going to use a Sharpie to mark them like I did. All right, so enough of that. I wanted to make sure you knew that was available. Let's take a look at the new line that just came out. And I'm mentioning this because it is still 10% off until for um, two and a half more days. So on Friday at one, um, the, it will go back up to normal price. We always do this on new introductory products uh, to get the whole bundle. So what comes in the bundle? You have mats. I haven't even opened them yet. And I'm actually a little bit excited. Let's take a peek. All right. I like to see our mats to see what they've done because um, probably one of my favorite things. So we have journal boxes and they're double sided. So you have more than one option. So it looks like a lots of journal boxes, which, oh, I like, I like. All right. This one, of course, you could use as a journal box or you could plop a photo on top. Perfect size for your photo. All right. So all of these are. Perfect size for four by six without cutting them down. If you don't want that oval for, again, you can throw it right down there. All right, and then these are great for decorations or mats. So you can do either one. Um, I tend to do a little bit of both. Sometimes I put out the embellishment to make it smaller. Gracie. Oh my goodness. She's like a barker, isn't she? All right, like I could cut this out and then use what, what was left for... Um, for a mat. So I'm going to really like these. I can tell. I love these that have these little like wreaths. You can cut those out and make that a really nice embellishment. I did that one, one not too long ago. A little bird for insect cute. Okay, so now they're both barking. All right. So, uh, so it's oh. painful. That's probably the hardest part about a home based business. I have the advantage of being home with my dogs, and I have the disadvantage of being home with my dogs. <laughs> so, anyways, it is what it is. This is their house, too. And I'm sorry, it's not so annoying. All right, actually, let me see if I can get them to go out. I know y'all all joke on me to do this, but I tried to make it as po positive as possible. Mark. Well, please, Sarah. Come on. Come on, we'll go outside. Hey, Bart. Come on. Come on. Let's go outside. Let's go outside. Come on. Out. Oh, come on. Out. Okay, so they're barking at a Dominion Energy truck, so the very valid concern for them. <laughs> All right. 
So I wanted to give a plug. So we have these um, borders, super pretty. Oh, we've got some birdies, flowers. This is called Birds and Blossoms. So, so pretty. Nest and butterflies, vines and vines. We love vines, birdies and um, tulips, which are my fave. All right. And uh, what I like to do, I think I've mentioned this. I know I have because it's like so cool. I like to store them in the two and a half by 12. Um, it's called fill and, uh, fill and file sleeves, I think. And um, in that way, they don't get messed up. All right, so I would open, I always get two packs of these. I'll get the bundle and I'll add an additional pack of these because I often, not always, but I often do double page spreads with them. So I would put the matching ones together. All right, so you don't need to see me do this, but I did want to let you see how nicely they are. And they will also store, I haven't even made a folder for these yet, but um, I like to drop all of my things in these folders. So after I have this loaded, this will fit nicely in the folder for me to pull out along with, what did I do with those pretty mats? Huh, oh, here they are. They'll go with my mats. That was a place for my stickers. Let's take a look at the stickers while I'm at it. So it looks like we've got birds and bird nests and birdhouses and flowers and pretty sayings. In the spring, at the end of the day, you should smell like dirt, funny. Spring is in the air, early bird gets the worm. Super cute. So I have a place for these as well. And then we've got paper. Take a quick look at that. Oh yeah, that's so pretty. Oh, that is beautiful. Mm. Really pretty, huh? Mm, I love this. I love the colors. It's funny how when you see it in person, it's so much prettier. I thought it was pretty before, but now I think it's crazy pretty. We're going to have some fun with that. I'll have some pages for you next week. My husband is having a procedure today that is not FDA approved. So if you're the praying type, if you'd send some prayers up for him, um, he lives with chronic pain and we're trying something that we are just so hopeful um, that will work. And so, um, yeah, yeah, keep keep us in your prayers. We're going to do that today. And he's going to be breathing down my neck in just a minute to get out the door. So I'm trying to move, move, move this morning. <laughs> All right. Um, wanted to show you this from last week. I forgot to show you this pretty border. But well, what I taught last week was how you can put our ABC stickers down and then outline them with our pens. So I outlined this one with silver. Is that super pretty? It's probably a little bit blurry. but I love that. I didn't show that one last week. I showed all these. I didn't show that one. So anyway, so, so this is black outlined with gold this is white outlined with green and this is white outlined with silver and um again white with silver with that pretty new scallop heart border maker cartridge all right so i wanted to show you that all right next what i want to show you is um our new punches so a couple of things um we're gonna start with I'm going to start with this one. So this is a frame punch. So we we come out with them so seldom that I always feel like I need to reteach it because every time we come out with one new, we remember that they have these features. So first of all, um, just to do a regular border, remember we've got a line here for a regular border. So if I was going to do a regular old border, I'm going to line up the edge of the paper to that little notch. And then I'm going to go down, um, covering, making sure that the green covers all the blue. On frame punches, you're going to have this line of blue that's going to show through, but you just want to make sure you cover the pattern, all right? This one is really easy. Some of them um, are easier than others. You're going to like the way this one feels. Very simple, simple to use. 
one thing to keep in mind, when you cut these out, a lot of times our scraps are really useful. And this is one of those cases um, because you can take these little leaf-like pieces out. Like if I was doing a little journal box, um, you could take the leaf part out and rebuild another leaf. So see how that is a beautiful leaf? Uh, I'll lift it up in a minute. And then we have a smaller one also that you can make to kind of sprinkle them around your pages. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these pieces of trash and rebuilding to make other leaves. Okay, so so when, at, when you're on the same page, that one is backwards. When you're on the same page, um, you can use the same pieces of trash to get more, more out of it. Okay, so I wanted to show you that. All right, you can put color behind it. So let's grab another color green maybe and put that behind it so that you can see a different look. But what I also really like, and I am going to need a piece of neutral colored paper, which I think I will need in the computer. What I really like to do, um, you could cut it off um, I think I'm going to use um, the dark colored one that I made earlier. I could cut it off if I wanted to um, or leave it, you know, whole. E either way, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. All right. So let's say I was going to put a border right here. Let's go ahead and do a border right there. Let's go ahead and stick it down. So I'm very proud. I'm going to use my repo on this. And the reason I'm going to use my repo is because there's so many holes in it. If you're new to this, the ones that have green on the inside are the ones that are, are really easy to use. You don't have to be careful where you stick it. All right. Because it's just a little tiny micro dots. All right. So there we go. All right. What I think is really cool, like I could I could take my punch and go into contrasting cardstock and fill these spaces in. But now that we have our groovy, cool pens, oh, my gosh, I thought we would use pens today. So these um, I, I don't know how much longer these are going to be about. So if you need more pen colors, I do recommend you get these with the little free little wrap that they come in um, to get some more colors. But um, look at how pretty this looks. So um, just to get some texture, I'm going to just take my pen and scribble in those leaf spots. So I'm going to do that in the, the big leaf spots. All right. And then in my small leaf spots, I'm just, again, to give it a different look, I'm going to flip it and grab the other side of the pen, make it darker, just to give it some, a different look. I think I'll make the stems on these darker too. How about that? All right. And then what I'm going to do is grab a red. Um, what was I using? This one. And um, I'm going to fill in these to kind of look like berries. Bam, bam. Is that super pretty and fast? I really love the way that looks. So I wanted you to think out of the box. Of course, you know, if you use a double-sided paper and, and punch out, you can flip holes and stuff like that. But I just I just think this is super pretty using just your pens. So I wanted to give you that little tip. Um, another tip. So this is going to be a great a vine. I wanted to remind you of another vine we have called Leafy Vine. This is a good one, and it does... 
Um, it's a it's a board. Oh, oh, oh! Before I do that, I want to show you how to frame this. So framing, um, you can use framing. In other words, it's going to go all the way around something. So you can go all the way around your paper. You can go all the way around a photo. But when you do that skill, it has to be even. And I know I've shown this e oodles of times. It has to be even. So if you have a standard four by six photo and you want to frame it with this pretty cool thing and maybe put these little berries and colored leaves all the way around the photo. Wow, 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 how pretty that would be, right? Um, you want to add two to the, to the dimensions. Add sign, not time sign. So it's going to be an eight, six, sorry, I can't even add, a six by eight piece of paper. So let's go ahead and cut ourselves a six by eight piece of paper. All right, so here's the eight. I'm gonna put my little line on the eight and go up. And then I'm gonna go on the eight again and go from the cut line up. That will give me six by eight. It will work with even dimensions, okay? So it'll work on a 12 by 12 piece of paper. It'll work on a 10 by 12 piece of paper. But if I'm framing a photograph that's four by six, you're gonna add two. If I'm framing a photograph that's eight by 10, what would you use? Go ahead, say the answer out loud. Go ahead, what would you use? <laughs> it would have to be 10 by 12, all right? Because you're gonna add two to the dimensions. All right, so if you got that right, you should be very proud of yourself. Now we are framing. So we are not going to do a border, we are going around. So if you're going around, do not use this line. You wanna use this line here. There's another one on this side. So if you're left-handed, you could do it that way. All right, uh, but I am going to line up my piece of paper to this line and I'm gonna move. And you're gonna think you did something wrong because this is sticking out, but you didn't. All right, you're gonna keep going until this amount is sticking out at this end. So in this case, it's gonna be two times. All right, now what we're gonna do is flip it. We're gonna line this up with this mark. All right, now remember, don't get carried away. I want a piece sticking out down here. So I told you that amount will stick out, it won't. You just want a slither sticking out and then you'll get that same amount. All right, now we're gonna rotate it again. We're gonna line that up to that, that line here. And you're gonna go, go until just a slither is sticking out. There it is. All right, and then we're gonna go around one more time. You're thinking, what are those little things? Well, we're just gonna pull them off. They're barely hanging on, just pull them off. We're gonna do it again. And this time we're gonna knock off both of them at the same time. There's one, so that should do it, bam, bam. All right, and then your photo that is a four by six. Let's get a wedding photo here, maybe. Um, you'll be able to stick that in, um, and then you can still see the leaves around the edges. Is that super pretty? And then you could do your coloring like we did before. If you want to trim it down a little bit on the side, you could get the full full view. But isn't that lovely? All right, so that's how you do that. All right, uh, the other punch that I haven't talked about yet is the fresh flowers. So we talked about spring leaves, and now we're talking about fresh flowers. If you're wondering how I know the names today, I put the boxes out like a really smart advisor so that I could remember. <laughs> All right, so this does just pretty little flowers. All right, but again, when you do this, stuff that goes out can be used also. So we've got a pretty little flower here, and we've got stuff to make a flower here. So you could use your, um, I would pull out your precision point um, adhesive and your lifter stick for this. All right, and um, let's go ahead and we'll put a little dot down where we're going to put the flower. 
Um, to use this, I've been seeing a lot of chatter about how to use this. You just kind of like squeeze the little middle to get a little dot to come out. All right, and then once you do that, we can grab the middle with our lifter stick and pop it right down on that little blob. All right, and then we're gonna put some leaves around it. I'm gonna do five little petals. One, two, three, four, I might do six. All right. You definitely could do seven because that's the way it's built, you see? All right, now I'll grab my lifter stick again and put the little narrow towards the middle and you can put it anywhere you can put it so that it's touching or not if stuff kind of sneaks out of, um out of the sides don't worry because it dries clear So you could have two different types of flowers on the same page. All right, you want to put them closer together and you can put seven as well. All right, but you can see how these would look really pretty together, right? It's on the other side. Oh yeah. So here we could have white and yellow together. Is that pretty? So I wanted to make sure you did not throw the trash away to those. Those are going to be really pretty together. And I also wanted to point out about mm. the leafy vine, because this is another good one. And that's going to look really nice in conjunction with these flowers as well. And le leafy vine is a regular border punch, just like this one is. This one is border. So this one does two things. It does the frame and the border. This does just borders. But I wanted to show you how I use this. Like this would be a great vine, of course. But it also is really nice to just make stems. So you can just cut this up. Um, let's see here. Here probably would pick off this half one. And then you can just make, you know, pretty little little vines for your flowers, stems, I should say stems for your flowers. So I probably would cut off a little bit more. So you can use stems for your flowers or you can make vines for your flowers. All right. Um, if you want them to, to twist around, you can, you can do this on the corners. So this is a fave and it's been around for a while. So I like to warn people, it's not going to be around forever. So um, uh, this one will be, everybody will be looking for it if you don't get it now. Um, it, it's, it's one of those that I really highly recommend. Is that pretty? All right. So I think that's all that I had to say today. I want to thank you so much for watching me. Um, and if you need an advisor, I sure would love your support, as would any advisor out there. Um, this is how I make my money. <laughs> and um, I truly, I enjoy um, doing this. Um, I feel absolutely so gifted to, um, I, I never thought of myself as creative because I was a math major. Um, however, I guess I am. And um, I like to use my gifts to help others. Um, but I would love, love, love your support. This is an absolute amazing um, way to make money. Um, so um, um, I, I do appreciate your support. Uh, what else? And my name is Becky Bloat. So if you go to creativemembers.com and, and search for an advisor, just type in my name, B-E-C-K-I-E-B-E-L-O-T-E, -E -E, or find an advisor near you. All right. Thank you so much for watching and y'all have an amazing week. Bye now.